Head into the darkness I can see you guiding me I'll follow in your footsteps, mother For so long Head into the darkness You don't want to follow me Say goodbye to everything Say so long Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Maybe to Bip. <laughs> Last time on Maybe to Bip. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Maybe to Bip. <laughs> I'm gonna try to say that. <laughs> Sweating. Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Maybe to Bip. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Maybe to Bip, Eptipode 2. <laughs> Alright, that's good enough. I've recorded that like four times and I can't stop cracking up and it's ruining my morning. Hello, we're here for Maiden Abyss, Season 2, Episode 2, Golden City of the Scorching Sun, continued. Last time on Maybe to Bip, <laughs> we followed a driven group of ancient adventurers following a compass that points downward towards something unknown in search of destiny and potentially salvation as well as the unknown and the mysterious driven by some pull some yearning to seek out their future their destiny in a place not yet named orth they came upon an ancient, inhabited island, lost from time, and descended through the same layers that we've been struggling through in our time. Now, as our characters step forward into the city of the unreturned, and whatever lies beyond it, and potentially... I'm thinking the living adventurers from then... And I've got nothing but questions about all the potential time fuckery involved. Our stories collide as we enter the same places that they've been before. Will we actually collide with them? I hope so. I really hope so, because I think that's the most interesting possibility, is meeting somebody from outside of time and finding out what their experience of being down here for what has clearly been thousands of years up top has been. I want chats between Rico and Vueco. I want to find out what's really going on with Wazukyan and Beloth and all of that. And I want to know how long they've been down here and if they're still alive. That is the impression that I've gotten, is that we're going to meet these characters. And that raises all of the questions of how. I'm really excited. We're so far into the deep unknown that it's like, it's not really on our maps. It's not really in our, in our understanding of this world. And even what we do have is at this point twisted and warped. And the landscapes that we've gotten have already been twisted and warped. Overall, the production has been exactly what it was before, maybe even a little bit better because it's kind of just vibing and flowing and just feels like it, it flows out. I dig this show, y'all. And I'm really excited to see what we expand into, having crossed this immense threshold of Bone Drood and the city above and all of that stuff. Now we enter into potentially a new social world. A city of unreturned? I feel like there might actually be a city down here, and I'm really excited to find out what that is all about. So I'm going to scribble some random floating objects, and then we're going to get into it. Okay, so shapes-wise, I think this will be something, and then this is all... This is where our characters will be, is like on this um, outcropping. And then this is a descending mist, right? So a, a feeling of emptiness and void all through in here that just hangs over everything, right? Weird clockwork stuff. Okay. 
This will be a rocky outcropping, so there'll be a little boulder here. And some, like, I don't know what that is, but it's like a chunk of debris. Maybe the vein of a windmill or something. <laughs> Feels like there were, like, structures and buildings all built through it. Like, it's half, half ruins and half catastrophe. Like natural insanity. I don't know. I've I don't know. This place is cool. <laughs> big big not a cheap backpack. Sitting down. Big chillin'. Stirring the pot. Nice. Yeah, I like this little landscape. There's a cool mixture of soft and harsh and, like, crumpled and smooth. And I feel like the overall scale feel of this being so small and that making everything else feel large and this actually feeling like it's got depth to it actually worked out here. I'm surprised by how well this turned out. I thought it was going to be a huge flub. Very cool. All right, I don't think that there's much theory slinging to be done here. I do have one kind of interesting question on that front, though. Is the compass that we had in the very first episodes of the very first season the same compass? I feel like it almost must be. Now, there may be many of those compasses, but... Voiko left it up top with those people, right? So it would have been an easily discoverable relic probably near the surface. It feels likely to me. My second question is one that's just, I'm dumb. Do we currently have the compass? I remember something falling and us not having access to it anymore. Was that the compass or something else? I feel like it was the compass. Could it have made its way all the way down here? If so... Will the people down here be expecting us? I don't freaking know. It's just a random thought. But I am curious about this artifact that links our two groups across time and space. An artifact that points to the secrets that they're both seeking. I think that could be really cool. I'm ready to watch the episode. Let's watch episode two of Maiden Abyss, The Golden City of the Scorching Sun. Two versions, picture in picture, in the description. Timer on YouTube. Beep beep timer to count you down. Beep, beep, time to count you down. We're in Fuego's mind. Oh, split, split. That's fun. Uh, uh, uh. was not something we could handle, so how did they handle it? Oi! There are traps! Was that an intentional trap? That looked like an intentional trap. <laughs> totally unfazed by the almost dying. The building is made of crystal? Are they grown? <laughs> Ready? That's the theory that I'm on. I don't think that one. I'm with you on that. No OP! Praise be. Ooh, that's... That was Fuego. Wonder what happened to you? Gonna be our villain, maybe? Stuck down here? Ooh. Oh, wow.
So this is going to be a connecting across boundaries sort of story, huh? Flash, flash. Same places. Scanning? <laughs> Scanning some artifacts? And Belloc's eye. Whoa! That was the little girl. She's been turned. She's been hollowed, too. Oh my god. A bunch of, of semi-gooped. But people who are, like, living their best lives while being semi-gooped. Oh my god. There is so... That's a whistle. Ah. Uh... <whistles> she wasn't... Maybe it's different. What was that? What was all of that? What was that? <laughs> We've been noticed. Flows of consciousness are gathering. Oh. They've got rock heads. They're like mixed over or melded with the abyss? All this stuff is so cool looking. Cool. Hmm. If. <laughs> that seems likely. We're two for three. Or two for and two. So that means any whistles that are down here could only communicate up via what the fuck is that? Mail balloons. Takes notes for D&D. <laughs> huh. Yeah, let's not fight anything we don't have to. They seem very cute. The Legend of Zelda creatures? Why are they... Balut. Maybe we shouldn't. The scorching sun. What? Hiding time. Oh, man. We got environmental hazards. Big blot like a bubble of lava? It just keeps happening. What the hell? And is the screech just expanding gas so it gets up to a size and then pops? It's like bubbles of lava or something. But then what was the little orb that was the exact same color? In the OP. They did. Because she sees interesting in everything.
be a full half made baby in there. Gross. Guess it's like eating turtle. And maybe they're adapted to the intense heat. As well. Uh, live squid. Oh, you're. <laughs> we gonna fry him? We're you making calamari? That's frying. Oh, it's still moving! <laughs> if it still moves after it's been fried, it does not count as food. Nah. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Was this what they were trying to see again? <laughs> Mission successful. <laughs> hmm. Mm hmm. Calamari. <laughs> Hmm. Haven't thought about Kiwi in a long time. I hope so too. <laughs> Thanks, Nanaji. <laughs> Mm. You are further than How does that How does that get through the big water descent submarine thing? How does that work? Hmm. Mm. Too far. Okay. Cool. How? And we know that it did. Probably not. That sure is a thing to say. One shot. Amen. Love that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh. 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 Holy shit. That was awesome. Ooh, we're being observed.
Was that... Did we see that in the OP? I don't know. <laughs> That's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. A notice. Oh, we don't know what that li what that word means. What does it mean? They took mania. They took Prushka. They need a whistle. Oh, because the letter was in the mail balloon. And took your whistle. Also, this soundtrack is excellent. What is it? Huh? Iron? To make, uh, make your own crayons. It's like they, yeah, it's like they want to be followed, actually. Why would they leave a note at all? Why would they leave a note at all? It's like they want to be followed. Wow. Wow. And we just have to descend further. Ooh. And we can never reascend. You smell Brushka? Let's go, Mania. Ooh, some corpses? Ooh. Are they sewed up? What the fuck? They put a person in a body? Why is there hair in those people? Huh? What? Why? I mean, it seems super horrifying, but what's the reason for it? Super creepy. Let me keep going, yeah. Unless it's just intended to scare you? That doesn't make any sense. Are they trying to make voodoo dolls? Or is it a total, like, lack of comprehension? Does whoever's doing this think that they're trying to make inroads or communicate and doesn't know how? Is it actually innocent? Weird. Maybe the city we've been waiting for or the capital? Big. That, that must be where we need to go. Little footprints inside the big ones. What a pleasant place, maybe.
I'm digging this track. Mysterious and ethereal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same symbol. It looks like a person falling, but I, I assume it's not. It must be a glyph. That's our clue. <sighs> okay, and what is it that we're crossing? Whoa. Charge! What is all of that structure made of? Bones? How did it grow? Why is there blood all over it? Or iron stuff? That's the little girl. That is the little girl. The little tribe's girl. And Nanashi doesn't sense the force field changing, right? That was quick. Is it not here? It's a wall? At the pillar thing that she's in the center of? Oh. <laughs> I mean, you did it. It's okay. We're still descending. What is this? What am I hearing? Oh my god, they all live here! Oh my god. A city indeed. Mechanical? They speak the old language. And they've met cave raiders. What the fuck are you? Brought it to us? What the fuck? A skilled one is doing the stone? Can't return from this area? 
Like, by entering this space, we've just sacrificed all of our humanity? Is that what just happened? Did we just get no told in narration after the fact that Rico's not going to be a person anymore? Cool, cool, cool. Love that. A city of the unreturned! <laughs> They're there! That's what they are! I wonder what we're looking at here. It's spectacular. And next time? Oh, Majikaji. Village of the Hollows. Amazing. Amazing. So they can continue on as sentient beings, can't they? That means that all of the, the goops that Bondrude was keeping as just goops were potentially fully sentient beings still. Wow, this is so cool. This uh, The whole exploration of a new landscape is... Uh, it's so good. It's so damn good. This show's so damn good at it. And the music is so damn good. And there are pieces throughout that are, like, I think new pieces of music. I mentioned one as we were, as we were getting it. The, like, mystery mystery wonder ethereal unknown thing as we explored was just so good and so so cool even the stuff that feels like it should be you know a, a three minute scene of your characters cooking some weird eggs that turn out to be a weird flavor and still move and then cooking them again to make them a little bit more palatable and then eating them should be boring as fuck it should be boring as fuck, and it isn't. It's, it's like, engrossing. It's like, I, I'm there with them, and it fills out the whole thing, and I, I don't understand how. Because, consciously, while I was watching that scene, I was like, the actual events that are occurring here, eating some weird eggs, are boring as fuck. And I was reminded of the other scenes that we've had where our characters are just sitting around making dinner and making food and stuff and putting stuff together and eating. And the whole thing is just, like... Should be boring as fuck, and instead I'm like, wow, is Nanachi gonna like this one? And I'm in it. Insane. And that's, like, the worst shit in the show is still engrossing. Still enthralling. And then we go, we rock it over onto the other side, where we've got flaming lava bubbles, screaming and bursting, sending meteor-sized chunks of like acidic poison volcano magma hurling across the the landscape that's so cool that's so cool and so weird and i want to know what's causing it i want to understand the the geology or mythology or whatever the fuck is going on there giant spiral nautiloid spinning bird monster snatches your your weather balloon out of the air First off, an amazing gag on the level of like a kid releases a an injured bird and the bird like tweet 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 flits away and gets wow by a by a hawk or something. Amazing, shocking, beautiful. Or enormous seahorse four-legged giraffe dragons with poison scales who 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 rut by smashing their fucking Poison bodies against each other. That's so cool. <laughs> <coughs> 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 
I'm, <coughs> I'm sorry to just geek out here for a sec, but I just gotta geek out here for a sec. This makes me want to geek out. This is neat. This is neat. Endlessly creative. And utterly fascinating. I love the way we snap between between locations or, or voices, right? When we get this descent, it's Vueco's voice, almost certainly. I think so. I'm almost certain that that's Vueco's voice. So we're watching their descent, but then we snap to, and it's Rico's descent. It's like, no, whoa! Things are confused and things are blended together or weird. And that's exactly what this location is. Stuff blended together. A fossilized city is one way to put it. Or the earth grew up around a city. The idea that it's a fossilized city really does track because of the crystals grown into everything. She does say, she says it's built out of these crystals. It doesn't look like it's built out of them. It just has them, like, like, growing into it or around it. And that makes sense to me. Like, the bones of a city literally fossilized. But what? What chaos has... Is it really the abyss pulling the surface in? That's what it seems like, but... As Rico says, wonder in her eyes, I have no idea. I have no idea. All my knowledge and all my insights don't stack up against the wonder and absurdity of the landscape that I'm setting my eyes on. I feel... I feel exactly the same way. Answers or not, I want answers. I want understanding, but it's so broad and so vast that in some ways you just have to take it in and be awed by it. I feel like I need to frame by frame this OP, you know? So I'm going to semi frame by frame this OP a little bit. Swizzling lights and a major purple tone for a lot of things, which is cool. The compass spins and has more detail to it than I've noticed before, at least. I don't... I don't know. We zoom across... A, a pit of endless water? Underground. With all this stuff up above us. And in the center of it... Surrounded by tendrils that I feel like are attached to the hair? No, I guess not. Is Vueco changed and chained with the spiked collar maybe it's like a spider's web and it's dripping how very strange but we have this connection between the two of them on opposite sides of the camera so you can that can be either connection or enmity um, so that's interesting to me, and it leads me to believe that our journey over the course of this will be connecting with a creature who has lost some part of themselves, or, or Rico's capacity to find empathy with somebody, maybe somebody unforgivable otherwise. Falling, descending, and then she clasps something as she's falling? Is it just the whistle? I don't know. I think that these moments in the OP that show the bright world up above, our previous descents, are so cool because they've got this layered in nostalgia now. And the scenes even feel bright and light and fluffy in a way that brings me back to that place. Just feels really wonderful to be up here. And then we're snapping back and forth between the two, the two groups. Descending on one side, descending on the other side, and then the same up and down. That makes me wonder. Maybe it was one of this party that sent up some of those notes. Wouldn't it have been? It could have been. Because of the... Huh. Huh. Places we've passed through. I'm, un I'm not totally clear. But I get the impression that we're eating meals in the same locations that they have. And then down below we're seeing the leftovers and remnants and dilapidated bits and pieces. I don't know. This is so cool. That's her. A hundred percent, right? That's the little, that's the little girl. And she's been changed. Been hollowed. 
And so that is the creature that we saw watching us because the three red gem pieces. What that has to do with the the color or the iron stuff, I don't know. What has happened to her, I wonder? Like a deer in the headlights. Oh, that mark is on a coin. Okay, I didn't see that. That mark is on a coin. And that's us riding on, not Majikaji, I don't think, but maybe another one? Where did we get those mechanical dopitudes? Oh my god, Rico's gonna cut all her hair off! Holy shit! And be super, super dankin' dope. She seems like a badass. But that's not Prushka, is it? Is it? It falls here. It's not at all Prushka. Prushka has a totally different shape. With the, the little spit, spouts, the hearts up top. So do we get our hands on a different whistle and have to go in search of Prushka? That's super weird. That's super weird. What happened to Prushka? Well, we know what happened. This one took her. But why? To save a friend? Some crazy freaking monsters, some crazy freaking fighty scenes. That was the same goop stuff that was around... Vueco, isn't it? Yeah, I would guess it is. Looks like it. This is awesome. This was the frame in the OP that most stunned me. Because there's Rico surrounded by a whole group of obvious total hollows. And they're laughing and jamming out and having a good time. Whoa. Totally new aspect of the world. Is the whistle half white and half black? I have no idea. I have no idea. This is a giant insane mecha thing that we, I think, are fighting? Uncertain. And it looks like she is... I can't tell if she's landing on it and fighting it or if she's a part of it. Maybe she's fighting it. And on the other side, Awakening Vueco. Huh. And blowing the whistle as we fall into the abyss deeper. This connection is critical. They embrace, and their embrace turns into an orb that is held in a handkerchief. I guess my thought was that it was the same color as the big orbs of explosion, but I think it has nothing to do with them. What the fuck is that? Like, what? What a cool... Okay, stepping back out of it, I really like the music of the OP. I think it's awesome. I really like the idea of the OP. Um, all the bits and pieces that are sprinkled around there. And there are some serious thematic like ties between characters opening their minds, being on, on opposite sides of a barrier. Rico and... Uh, other characters that she's had similar vibes with, Mitty and all that stuff, right? So this idea of connection being the thing that maybe solidifies stuff, but also immense amount of mystery, some of which gets revealed to us by the Village of Hollows, and finding out why it is exactly that there are all those Hollows having a good old time in the OP. Uh, this shot with all of the pillars around it, is one of my favorite, like, landscapes. It's so cool looking. I love how these pillars look. I love how this whole area looks. It's just rad. It's just so freaking this one. It's so freaking rad. Like totem poles or something. Totally unnatural formations that would not be. And so they look like overgrown barky trees or it's just impossible. And thus wondrous, right? Uh, thus wondrous. Speaking of wondrous, holy shit. Goobers. I figured out what they what these remind me of. Uh the the Legend of Zelda oh, what are they called? Dogrons? Grogons? Gorons. They're like weird dinosaur gorons. With weird moving eggs. And the craziest fucking shit. Just explosions of flaming hell. 
multiple of them in different locations too. What the fuck? Like huge bubbles. Nostalgia, cuteness, and cooking. I don't know how it works. Somehow it works. It works. It's amazing. I wanted to talk about this because I think it's really cool and I think there's something to be actually taken away from it for our real lives. It doesn't work out so well in this circumstance because they're... It just gets nommed. But I love this concept in fiction in general and I love it here. The abyss is a place where one's mindset manifests itself. That on its own is powerful. Then she lays out two, like, sub-clauses to that statement that I think really flesh it out. If your fears can take shape and manifest in your body, then couldn't your wishes also take shape and become reality? So we should all wish that that one will definitely reach them. This flies in the face of it, right? But it's not not true because of this one example, right? It's like saying... You can manifest anything in your life and you go, I'm a, I'm a billionaire. I am a billionaire. And you open your eyes and you're like, I'm not a billionaire. <laughs> Liar! You've deceived me! But that's not really what it's about, is it? Here's the way that I'm taking it. And particularly, the phrase that stuck with me was, if your fears can manifest inside your body, then why can't your wishes too? And I just want to extract from that a little piece of truth. We all know that stress can affect you negatively, right? It's pretty, pretty well studied at this point. Stress, fear, anxiety, they actively make you dumber, like you'll, you'll do worse on tests and quizzes. They actively make you less energetic and less capable and more doubtful and weaker and have uh, more prone to heart disease and failure and all sorts of diseases um, and general malaise and Ill, Ill being and all sorts of stuff. Fear and hatred and awfulness can be very, very truly manifest in us. People can wish to die and make that nearly happen. Mindset is real. Even though that's, I think, obvious to a lot of us, it's a lot less obvious to a lot of us that the opposite can be true, too. That belief in your physical form, in your body, in your mind, confidence in yourself, believing yourself capable and not afraid and strong, those things can have the opposite effect. In fact, they can have really intense physiological effects. You can, you can actually actively bolster your immune system, which is wild wild with with as far as we can tell purely with mindset um wild just absurd not to mention uh homeostatic regulation and and thermoregulation as proven by mr ice boy uh uh wim hof who mechanically changes his own metabolism and metabolic processes as well as his immune system with his brain with his mind we can all do that but it's so much easier to let fear and negativity wash over you. It takes conscious effort to cultivate positivity, right? So, I guess if there's something to take away, it's just a wake-up call. Cultivate that positivity if you can. Because it compounds upon itself. It makes things way better. I say this as somebody who's been in... I've been in a rough state for the last couple of months. I have, I have not been doing well, y'all. From physical, extreme physical discomfort to all sorts of just struggling with myself is the way to put it. Struggling with myself and with being. Just with existing. It's fucking hard sometimes, and I know that's ridiculous, but it's true. <sighs> this reminds me that during that period, I've spent maybe too much effort on the, the fear and negativity. And it may have affected me more than it needed to. Just these last few days, I've been, I don't know, it's so weird. 
something like switched on in me. I was like, hey, maybe you should get your shit together. Oh, yeah, I should probably get my shit together. How do I do that? And it all starts coming back. It's like, it's a part of the process that I've been through before and I'll be through again, you know? It's, it's all a cycle for me. <sighs> Cultivating positive wishes. And I don't mean that in a woo-woo bullshit manifested sort of way. I just mean that it's a lot easier to get out of bed in the morning when you believe what you're doing is worthwhile. Or at least believe that you could be accomplishing something. <laughs> so I appreciate this. This piece of an idea in Made in Abyss. Because it made me think. I think that's important. Even if, and I honestly feel this way. Even if I feel like I'm not thinking up to par. I don't think I've been thinking up to par. It sucks. It's like I'm in my own brain swimming through mushy soup is how it feels um and sucks but i've been in this internal abyss before like i said during mushoku tensei i'm even comfortable here not comfortable enough to stay but comfortable enough to know the path out and willing to start walking it <laughs> awful awesome such a cool mystery i love the track that starts to pick up as we discover the so freaking groovy and so uh, action super spy stuff i like it a lot i like it a lot and away we go now rushing to try to find answers and trace down this Monster who's stolen our shit and stuffed a bunch of our hair inside the bodies of corp corpse animals? What the fuck? We find a little hollow in... It, I just want to understand the landscape of this, of this location. We walk through this cave cavern tree thing. There's this pathway that does distinctly lead up into a giant pillar. What is this? A building almost looks like the carcass of some tree creature, but what is that? The thing across looks like the carcass of a creature, maybe, but what is this giant pillar? Is it a tree? So we cross it. We enter through a threshold across which the curse does not touch. And we come into a location that feels like it can't even be in there. Crazy artifacts and bones hanging everywhere maybe with sinister purpose maybe not and we emerge into the center of this place and it's swollen colored heart and find ourselves surrounded by hollows those so far gone i don't see any whistles on any of them i don't see anything recognizable about any of them and they have mechanical beasts, too, that are seemingly not hollow, but maybe maybe part? I, I don't know. Maybe built off of some of Bondrude's stuff? I don't know. But what a wild wonderland of weird creatures we have wandered into. I was so thrilled by that. I was so scared that the whole city of the unreturned, capital of the unreturned thing wouldn't be literal and there just wouldn't be anybody down here and it would just be empty and monsters. I'm so excited that there are people who live down here. Now, they don't look like us, but they are people. That means we can get some information, maybe. Like, hey, who's the oldest here and how long have you been here? That's a question that I'd like to know the answer to. Who's here? Who here is the oldest? And what's the last thing that you remember? And were you ever on uh, Earth side, top side? And what did it look like back then? Hmm? I'd really like to know. Goodness gracious. We, we again, we step a little bit further, a little bit deeper, a little bit, not even darker, just more interesting. It's gonna get dark eventually. That little girl got twisted up, and Voiko has a spite collar around her. That seems bad. Seems bad. And Voiko was not starting off her journey in a good place psychologically, so... 
lump some trauma onto the trauma and get a monster somehow. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe. But we'll have to descend deeper to find out and find Prushka, who we... <sighs> Prushka! Stolen. Not cool. Not cool at all. What's the deal with the other whistle? There are so many mysteries. I'm having a good time here with Maiden Abyss. I hope you are too, and I will wrap this episode there because I think I've mentioned all of the individual or particular things that I wanted to mention. The show feels so good. I thought it might have just been the the first episode, right? And then the cohesiveness of the first episode because people said that a lot of the first episode was some somewhat anime original. So it's like, well, maybe that's just the anime original vibe coming through and making a really cool reintroduction of the series. Or maybe it's me, and because I've already understood some parts of the series, coming and getting reintroduced to all these landscapes has more power to it. You know what? Having seen episode two, I think maybe season two is just really good. That's it's actually my takeaway, is that maybe season two is just really fucking good. That pleases me immensely, because we're going to be here for a little while, and I'm excited to find out what's down here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week for more Made in Abyss. Maybe a bit. <laughs> much love. Peace.